Hi guys, thanks for joining me this evening. I'm Mike of Mike Likes with another episode for you. Welcome to my garage. Why am I in my garage? Well, this is where my telescopes live. Garages are a convenient place to keep telescopes. Telescopes have to go outside. Garages usually more or less match the temperature outside. You could be 20 degrees warmer, you could be 20 degrees cooler, but that's a lot different than being 40 or 60 degrees cooler or warmer when you're indoors. So I keep my telescopes in the garage. I monitor the humidity and the and the temperature in here before anyone thinks I'm freezing these telescopes or cooking them. Don't worry, everything's fine. So I'm here with a Celestron Nexstar 6SE. This is my pride and joy, my grab and go telescope, my little orange buddy. And here is the newest member of our stable. This is a Nexstar Evolution 8 and a handsome telescope in this beautiful space silver color. I just really love the heft of this telescope. Um, the reason I'm making this video is that you get people on cloudy nights and you know slash r telescopes on reddit always asking do i want an se do i want an evolution i mean a lot of this comes down to price right you got to think this is eleven hundred dollars which is not a small amount of money but this is twenty one hundred dollars which is really not a small amount of money and that's new you can buy them used but that's something you really have to think about so I figured I'd compare them to you. I'm in the process, full disclosure, of reviewing the evolution. I'll make, I'll make my own video for that. But I thought I'd talk to you a little bit today about, you know, fit and finish, the experience of using them, what you kind of get. So you guys know the SC very well. This is the uh, entry level go-to scope in Celestron's line. They have some lower end stuff that's also got go-to technology. But for our conversation here, we'll say the SC is entry level. The SC has been around a long time. It's offered in four inches, five inches, six inches, and eight inches of aperture. So yes, there's a telescope this size that goes on this poor little mount. You can buy that. And on the evolution side, you've got the eight inch here, which is the mid-level. And there's also a smaller um, brother, which is the six inch. And then you've got the nine and a quarter inch. So at that point, you're looking at, you know, three different sizes of telescope there. What do I like about the SE? It's lightweight, it travels easily. You can throw this in a car, it weighs 21 pounds total. You do have to bring a battery for it. It doesn't have pack full of features. It does not have Wi-Fi built in. You can add that if you want to through use of a dongle on the aux port. This thing takes AA batteries. I've never put them in, I just put a lithium pack, but that is something to remember. You do need to have a battery to drive this. What do I not like about the SE? As a platform, it doesn't grow with you as much as the Evolution does. It doesn't have headroom in the mount to support, let's say, a nine and a quarter inch scope. It doesn't really support the eight inch that well. If you're thinking about an eight inch Smith Cassegrain, I wouldn't even consider the SE. A lot of eight SE owners love it, but that's because they've never tried an eight inch Evolution. I strongly believe that if you want an eight inch SCT, you wanna get it on a beefier, heavier duty mount that has some room to grow. Why do I say that? I say that because when you get an eight inch telescope, you start to think about expensive, heavy things to go with it. The StarSense auto alignment camera, two inch diagonal, two inch eyepiece. I mean, I don't have to tell you guys, this is a one and a quarter inch eyepiece, which, you know, most people get along with just fine. But if you want a truly two inch wide field eyepiece, this weighs five to six times what this weighs. So when you start adding all of that weight to your telescope, it really starts to feel it on the mount. You want a mount that has headroom to handle it. Now Celestron kind of does that to us, right? They make this to support an eight inch if you want it, and they make this to support a nine and a quarter inch telescope. Now, I don't know if you've seen a nine and a quarter inch SCT, it's almost twice the size of the eight inch, and the eight inch is not small. I mean, this thing's bigger than, you know, my hand. So you see what, what we're dealing with here. I wouldn't wanna put a nine and a quarter inch tube on this mount, and I wouldn't wanna put an eight inch uh, SCT on this mount. I think the sweet spot is six inch here, eight inch here. You could put a six inch on here too and have plenty of room as well if you wanted to do so, get a little lighter. We're talking about 21 pounds of weight here, soaking wet, so to speak, and 40 pounds here. Now, I've probably got this thing rigged up to weigh at least 45. I felt it on my back earlier when I brought it in. I never feel this. I pick it up with basically one hand. I put the second hand there for stability. So you don't need to really think about it when you're coming in after a long night of observing when you're bringing this guy in. He's just not gonna be that heavy. Now, in terms of fit and finish sound of everything, how it feels, you can hear the motors in this a little bit. It's quiet, it's kind of demure. Sometimes it sounds like 
those plastic gears are kind of like grinding coffee beans. This one is all metal gears. It really does sound louder, but professional. It makes more noise. You'll definitely hear it, but you feel like you're in an observatory moving around a heavy piece of equipment. I rather like that. And I like the idea that it has metal gears. Another thing I really like about the Evolution, which is absent on the SE, probably due to cost saving measures on the company, you can engage and disengage these clutches, these orange uh, circles here. I can move this around like a regular Altaz mount, like it's a Dobsonian or something, or I can tighten it and let the go-to take over and move things. So that's pretty neat as well, is that you can disengage and, and re-engage your clutches. Um, just looking at my notes here that I've con compacted here and I've compiled, shall we say. Um, pricing, right? That's what this comes down to. $1,100, $2,100. Always the Evolution is a better telescope, right? It's a better mount, it's a more solid telescope, but you're also spending an extra $1,000 new. What I would do, try to buy your telescopes used. Telescopes are the kind of thing that a lot of people buy and they end up not using as much as they think they will. Remember, astronomy occurs at the end of a very long day, after you've had a long day of work, school, taking care of your kids, taking care of whatever's come up, making dinner, getting the kids their bath, putting them to bed, reading them a story, and then hoping that the skies are clear and, and it's not freezing or searing hot or full of bugs. So people often find out, hmm, I don't think astronomy's for me. Next thing you know, their telescope's sitting in the corner, in a closet, in a basement, in a garage. They're not using it. A significant other usually tells them, hey, why don't you get rid of that thing? Give it to someone who wants it. Maybe you're the person that wants it. What would I do if I wanted a grab and go scope where I didn't have to worry about it? I wanted to save a little money get a 6SE, you'll absolutely love it. Now, if astronomy is becoming more of your passion, something where you can't wait for a clear night, you've joined an astronomy club, you're thinking about it all the time, go ahead and treat yourself, get an 8-inch evolution, you're gonna love this telescope. Now that being said, aperture fever is real. I don't suggest going past eight inches in an SCT. They get real heavy real quick. Once you're getting to 10 inches, 12 inches, those telescopes become more like rain barrel sized. And that's not something you really want on your back. So yeah, if you get into the aperture fever, you're probably gonna have to go to trust tube Dobsonians, things like that. That's beyond the scope of this video, but it's something I mentioned. I hope you guys have liked the comparison here. I haven't done my full review of the evolution yet. I plan to do one, so I will make a video just for him uh, without this little guy in the video. Uh, I just wanted to kind of show you the two siblings and kind of tell you where I was at. Uh, in any case, Probably gonna let the SE mount go. I'll probably keep the tube. I love the six inch SCT. I might keep it as a grab and go and just put it on the Evolution mount. I love the mount so much, but sometimes this eight inch tube is a lot. So I could put a six inch in and travel a lot easier. Something to think about, right? You could put a, any kind of telescope you want on these because they both take these Vixen plates, right? So they're compatible with anything that, that kind of fits into that grip. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you love the video, please throw a thumbs up. Um, if you even better, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, you'll get notifications whenever I post a new video. I've got some great stuff coming up. I've got another Celestron telescope arriving soon. That's gonna be exciting. And yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that. It's a great winter ahead of observing. It's Orion season, go up there. Even with binoculars, take a look outside, go see Sirius and Betelgeuse and Rigel and all those winter constellations and beautiful stuff in the sky. Thanks for being with me today and have a great one.